Hey folks, uh, my name is Sanya Kocher. I'm a software engineer at AKS here on the AKS traffic team. I've been working on the service mesh space uh, for the last few years now. Um, and specifically now I'm working on the Istio based add-on for AKS. Um, if you're new here, go uh, definitely go check out our previous video on the overview of the add-on. Um, but today we're going to be talking about versioning, upgrades, and the version support policy for uh, the service mesh add-on on AKS. So um, first, just wanted to talk through an overview of what um, the service mesh add-on revisioning or versioning looks like. Uh, so we use the term revision basically inter interchangeably with uh, versions. Um, the idea was to decouple it from the idea of a AKS cluster version, just because there is cross compatibility that we're going to talk about as well. Um, so we use uh, an ASM X Y um, naming, which corresponds to an Istio major version X and minor version Y. So for example, ASM 121 corresponds to Istio version 1.21. Um, and then patch versions within the minor band uh, for the add-on are automatically set and upgraded. So what you need to know is that you're running ASM 121 and we'll handle all of the upgrades for patch versions, make sure that you have all the bug, bug fixes you need um, and all of the CVE patches to keep you secure and up-to-date. Um, and then as for minor versions, you do get control over minor upgrades. Uh, so from 121 to 122, you would control that upgrade. Um, and there would be a range of AKS versions that each add-on revision would be compatible with. Um, and those, those versions correspond uh, pretty closely to the Istio upstream uh, versioning support matrix. Uh, so we try to just follow in terms of uh, releasing around the same time and then matching our our tested versions uh, with the Kubernetes tested versions as well. We do occasionally add um, more flexibility with the versioning in case there's a new Kubernetes version that doesn't have a compatible Istio version just yet. Um, we also have safeguards in place to make sure that you don't reach an incompatible mesh and cluster version com combination. Um, and we have a few operations available to show you um, what revision you can um, install and what revision you can upgrade to at a given time. Um, so going first into patch upgrades, um, there isn't a ton to talk about here uh, because patch upgrades are automatically handled for you. Um, so there's always going to be only one patch version uh, available per minor band at a time. And we'll take care of upgrading your control plane to that version for you. Um, and generally, we release it whenever issue Istio issues a relevant bug fix that we may need to roll out or a CVE patch. Um, and then we'll uh, the, the revision name ASMXY remains the same. At this point, your control plane would be uh, rolled over by us, but the data plane rollover is optional in case you wanted to uh, upgrade your, your sidecars, then you can do that by restarting your workloads. What we're really here to talk about today is minor upgrades. So minor upgrades um, are controlled by you, and um, we basically have built some safeguards to make sure that your um, your versions stay compatible, but also to make sure that your traffic flow is not disrupted during, during an upgrade. Um, and so to do that, what we have uh, implemented for upgrades is the Canary upgrade process that um, is also available in Upstream Istio. Um, so what this really means is that when you initiate an upgrade, it creates a second version of the control plane that exists side by side with the previous revision. Um, and then when you decide that you're happy with the upgrade, you can um, you can remove the old version or you can decide that you want to roll back to the previous revision if you find that metrics and health don't look as you want them to look. So we'll take when you when you initiate the upgrade, we take care of the control plane upgrade and then you'll have granular control over um, making each uh, workload part of the new revision and make it talk to the new revision. Um, and I'll go go over steps for that and, and a demo in a second. Um, so when you issue the uh, upgrade start command, the new control plane comes up, and then you can complete or roll back the upgrade to come back to one version. Um, before that, you would uh, carry out a data plane upgrade where you'd label the namespace with a new revision label, and then restart each workload one by one in those namespaces. Um, you might want to set up some kind of monitoring to make sure the traffic flow is, is exactly what it was before, or that the health is what you expect it to be. Um, and then 
uh, we make sure that that um, that you stay within the framework of, of AKS compatible versions during this entire process. Um, so in terms of steps, this is how it looks. Um, first, you find out what, what revision is available for you to upgrade to. Then you um, start the control plane upgrade. Then you carry out the data plane upgrade with the relabel and restart of the namespace. When you restart the namespace, uh, the workload in the namespace, it triggers sidecar reinjection for the new revision. And then when you complete or roll back, you come back to one version um, based on how you want to proceed with your upgrade. Um, I think at this point, it would be good to jump into a quick demo. Um, let me just pull that up. So taking a look at this, we have uh, ASM installed with revision ASM 117. Um, Ingress internal and external are both enabled, and there are two versions of the STOD pod as well. And we also have a sleep pod in the test namespace to um, serve as our demo for uh, what the upgrade looks like for workloads. Um, and then if you go into a closer inspection of, these, uh, of the sleep pod, you can also see um, the particular sidecar that's in it. The sidecar image corresponds to uh, 1.17.8 um, of Istio. And so uh, you can see that that's the patch version right now is 1.17.8. Um, at this point, you'd issue an AZAKS mesh get upgrades command on your cluster. And this gives you a cluster specific set of information about what revision you're allowed to upgrade to at this point. Uh, generally, it will be the next revision, but if you haven't upgraded in a while, we might um, give you another output, which I will cover um, after the demo. So yeah, you could see that uh, 118 was the revision available to you at that point. Um, now, if you start the upgrade, you do have to uh, specify the revision you're upgrading to. Um, and so uh, here, I'm going to just specify the revision as ASM 118. Um, this command does take a few minutes to run, but just in the interest of time, um, we can take a look now. The uh, AKS output, uh, cluster output will show 118 as well. And then when you inspect the pods, you can see a second set of pods for every control plane pod has come up and uh, it corresponds to, to ASM 118. But if we look back at your test namespace pod, um, you can clearly see that uh, it has this lib label for revision ASM117 um, that you need to override to actually change anything on your workload. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and relabel this and overwrite the label to point to ASM118 instead. And now you can see the revision label has updated. But like I said, um, it won't actually uh, change anything in your workload unless you trigger that um, restart of that workload. Um, so let's go ahead and dig deeper into that. So here we're just taking a look at the pod spec to see what the container image points at and verify that it still points at 117, which you can see above that it does. Um, now looking at, let's go ahead and restart the deployment um, and actually trigger that sidecar injection we had talked about. And then we go through the same step again, just to um, double check that uh, the sidecar has now updated to ASM 118 or the 118.5 patch image. Yep, so we can confirm that it is 1.18.5 now. Um, now, suppose you were not happy with this upgrade and you wanted to roll back, you would have to overwrite that label again and then restart the deployment um, to get back to 117. Um, if you don't do this, you will be left with your workloads pointing to a revision that you are about to remove in the next step. So um, let's go ahead and bring our, our workload back to 117. Um, and then just a note, this is the only time that you can actually roll back or downgrade. You cannot downgrade outside of a um, outside of an upgrade. So suppose you finish your upgrade to one, 
118, you cannot then go to 117 after your upgrade complete command is issued. And then I'll just confirm um, with a reminder to tell you that all the workloads have been rolled over to the right revision. And then let's just quickly double check everything is as we expect. Um, and you can see only 117 control plane pods exist now. So let's just quickly restart the upgrade um, and see it through to the end. And then I can get into some more caveats or things you might want to know about the upgrade and versioning policy that we follow. Um, so again, we brought up um, ASM 118 with ASM 117. Both um, control planes are up right now. Um, and then let's go ahead and restart, uh, relabel again to 118. And then let's restart the deployment. Once again, we're verifying the container image for the sidecars, 118.5. And then we finally issue the upgrade complete command. And this will basically remove the 117 um, control plane completely from your cluster um, and all the resources um, uh, for 118 will remain. Anything that was shared between the two, uh, for example, things that include information for IP addresses, um, those things will be um, will be shared among the two resources, and the system knows to keep those resources uh, running, so um, nothing extra gets removed. And then, yeah, let's just double check again, and we only see 118 control plane. Um, on our cluster now. And then a final check, and we've seen that we have the right image available. So that was the whole end-to-end -end, uh, upgrade process. Um, you can also run this process using Azure Portal or Bicep. Um, this demo was just specific to CLI, um, but on Portal, when you have a new version available for upgrade, there'll already be a little button to show you that you can upgrade. Um, so final few notes on this. Um, so in terms of validation, we make sure that we check the compatibility when you try to upgrade. Um, and we we try to block any, any combination that would help you get into a state that would be um, incompatible. And uh, if you do not upgrade for a long time, we do have uh, we do have a safeguard to help you recover from that as well. So, for example, if you haven't upgraded and the next is your revision, so suppose you're on one seventeen and one eighteen is not supported, then your only available upgrade would be to the lowest supported revision, which would be one nineteen or one twenty at the time. Um, and then this would be the only instance where you can skip from one one revision to another. Um, and then our release schedules, our compatibility and support policy will closely follow upstream Istio. So we try to keep up to date with that as much as possible. Um, and then, like I said, downgrades um, are not supported outside of the rollback framework. Um, so yeah, that's all on the, the upgrades versioning and the version support policy. Um, we do have a few more videos coming up um, and they're, um, they'll be up on our page soon. So be, be sure to check them out. Thanks.